Hi guys, I'm Erica. Welcome to Hack Your Health. In today's video, I'm going to go into a brief introduction on probiotics. And this is a really huge topic, so I'm going to break it down into future videos. So if there's any element of this that you'd like to know more about, please let me know in the comments. And if you want to know more about probiotics, you can also subscribe for those future videos. On my channel, I focus a lot on healing from Crohn's disease, healing from autoimmune diseases, and healing digestion in general. And this is not intended in any way as medical advice. It's just to help you do research. So I'll also put a lot of the articles that I use as sources for the information in this video in the description box. So if you want to read more about these topics, you can also look at those articles yourself. So I became really interested in probiotics when I was doing the specific carbohydrate diet to heal from Crohn's disease. And one thing that seems to come up again and again is that people who are healing their digestion successfully are generally eating either fermented milk in the form of kefir or homemade yogurt. So it seems like fermented milk is really, really helpful to us when it comes to healing the gut. And this makes a lot of sense when you think of how our guts are first populated as infants. So when we're born, the baby is pass through the vaginal canal and in that passageway there are a lot of different kinds of bacteria, and those same strains are the ones that are also found in the digestive tract of infants and in the case of cesarean born babies they have different strains generally that are found on the skin and that's why a lot of the time cesarean born babies will be given something like B. infantis as a supplement. So bacteria are something that are passed down generationally through childbirth and then the microbiome really starts to grow through breastfeeding so there are bacteria and the specific sugars that are necessary to feed those bacteria in breast milk and the sugars that are in breast milk are actually impossible for a baby to digest on its own they are simply there to feed these populations of bacteria that are necessary to basically establish the microbiome in the gut and help with establishing the immune system of the infant. So as we get older and we introduce different kinds of food, our microbiome becomes more diverse and it evolves. So depending on what you're eating, different forms of bacteria will be fed. So if you eat a lot of sugar, for example, bacteria that feed on those forms of sugar will become the most populated. And if you eat milk, chances are that you'll have more of those bacteria which digest milk and so on and so forth. So your microbiome it is established both by what you're eating and what kind of bacteria you are consuming, but also it evolves depending on what you feed it. So that's one of the premises behind the specific carbohydrate diet is that it's only including certain carbohydrates in the diet and starving populations which feed on the other excluded forms of carbohydrates. So you can intentionally change your microbiome through feeding or not feeding certain kinds of bacteria. And you can also change it by consuming those bacteria themselves. So coming back to milk and kefir and yogurt, I think it's very interesting that people who are healing their gut often have the greatest success when they're eating fermented milk products and how similar that is to how our gut is originally established with bacteria as infants. So it seems like this is something that would be familiar to our body. And our digestive and immune system also evolved alongside bacteria. The bacteria in our gut is important for mood regulation, for creating different nutrients and um, vitamins, for example. And I'd like to do a future video about the kind of where the bacteria is in the gut and the anatomy, because that's another topic. But the bacteria is really only supposed to grow in the large intestine, and there's not supposed to be any bacteria in the small intestine. In the case of people with Crohn's disease, sometimes the sphincter that is in between the small and the large intestine is letting through bacteria, and that can have to do with a calcium deficiency, among other things, and bacteria has been able to get into the small intestine, and that is also sometimes called SIBO, or small intestine bacteria overgrowth. Really, there's not supposed to be any bacteria 
in there, but it's very important to have bacteria in the large intestine. So when we're talking about the microbiome of the gut, it's really the microbiome of the large intestine only, not the small intestine. So humans have been drinking the milk of other animals for at least seven to 9,000 years which is similar to how long we've been growing plants for agriculture. The human microbiome and even human genetics have evolved alongside drinking milk and especially eating yogurt. So drinking milk in its raw state is relatively new, but people have been using milk to make cheeses and yogurts and other fermented products for at least seven to 9,000 years. And the reason why they know that is because they found those proteins that are found in cow or sheep or goat milk, whatever that population is using on the teeth of bones that they found from these ancient humans. And then they've also found pottery and the residue of the milk in pottery. The areas where they've found this, that far back at least, includes India, Iran, Europe, Russia, and many other places. And about 7,500 years ago, people with the genetic ability to break down lactose started to become, let's say, more common. So that was a selected for trait, and over time, humans have become more and more able to digest lactose due to basically probably the survival rate of people who were digesting lactose for whatever reason was higher than those that couldn't digest it. But even all those thousands of years ago when the vast majority of humans were genetically unable to digest lactose, they were still eating dairy. They were just eating it in the form of yogurt and cheese and other fermented milk products. So our microbiome has evolved with exposure to these things and basically the sugars and the probiotics in that are very conducive to a healthy human microbiome. And those arguments that say that it's unnatural for humans to drink the milk of other animals are kind of ignoring how we've evolved actually to drink milk. And one of the earliest ideas, or not to drink milk, but to eat fermented milk specifically, one of the earliest ideas that our human ancestors would have had is to drink the milk of other animals because we would have already had that concept in our minds through how mothers and infants work and humans would have always wanted a stable sustainable source of food and by kind of corralling these grazing animals that were living around human ancestors and early humans i should say they would have been able to provide themselves with a steady source of nutrition so it makes perfect sense that humans would have sought out these animals that they could have the milk of and there's even evidence of people you know milking reindeer you know sheep cattle all those things horses many many different animals have been used for milk by humans so for this reason I would highly suggest using a probiotic that is in the form of fermented dairy if you can at all tolerate that in fermented dairy the lactose is actually broken down and you're eating the probiotics along with the sugars that feed the probiotic. So it's a probiotic and a prebiotic at the same time. You can also buy probiotics such as Natrin um, or other brands, and I'll do a video about that in the future too, that specifically isolate and grow these probiotics in the lab and then ship them and keep them alive. However, I think that it's likely that if you're eating the whole food, this will help establish the population better because it will come with the probiotic and what the probiotic needs. But supplements are also effective for many people. And one probiotic that's considered is extremely gentle for people that are just starting and have a very sensitive immune system is B. infantis. And if you've taken antibiotics at any point, then it's possible that this has severely disrupted those early populations of bacteria. For example, ciprofloxacin kills this infantis bacteria, among others. So if you've taken ciprofloxacin, for example, this may have disrupted that bacterial population, and it may be helpful to restore that through eating foods that have that. Some forms of yogurt have it, for example, 
or taking a supplement. Fermented vegetables also would have been widely eaten by our human ancestors, and this is something that's often forgotten in in modern society. So in order to preserve food, it used to be necessary to ferment that food. And when you ferment food, it becomes filled with beneficial bacteria. However, we now have HACCP, for example, which is a program which is meant to remove all the bacteria for food before selling it. And a lot of facilities that mass produce food need to be HACCP certified, which means that all the bacteria has been killed. So in our food source, they're intentionally killing bacteria to prevent us from getting certain foodborne illnesses, but we're also depriving ourselves of those bacteria that can colonize and protect our microbiome. So eating fermented foods can really help with that and eating fermented vegetables would have been a main food source for us until, you know, modern packaging and preservation techniques became more popular. So eating fermented vegetables is also a really great way to get natural probiotics that come along with the food that they feed on and that can really help repopulate your microbiome. And in people with Crohn's disease, the diversity of the microbiome is often much less than in healthy people. And certain bacterial populations, which are considered more harmful if they're overgrown, often are uh, overgrown in people with Crohn's disease. So their microbiome will be, their gut microbiome, will be very different than those of healthy people. And basically when you change your diet and introduce probiotic foods, you can shift the microbiome and basically it will start to resemble that of a healthy person. So those are some of the concepts behind eating a paleo diet or the specific carbohydrate diet and eating these fermented milk products and fermented vegetables. Basically the goal is to change the microbiome and to reestablish healthy populations as well as to starve off harmful populations. And when you have healthy populations of bacteria, it also creates more competition so that when you do eat something that has a harmful bacteria on it, there's really no place for it to go because all the surface area of the large intestine is populated with bacteria. Whereas if you take antibiotics and you kill off some or you just don't have healthy gut population, it makes it easier for there to be an overgrowth of something that's gonna become harmful in a large population. I'll go more into that in future videos because this is quite a large topic that has a lot of different factors that come into it. So let me know what you're most interested in hearing more about in, in regards to probiotics, whether it's the kinds that are most gentle for supplementation in the brands or, you know, the anatomy or anything else that you would like to know more about so that I can focus more on those in future videos. And the bacterial population is important not just for digestion but also for the immune system and it even affects our mood and I have a previous video about that. So it's, it really is important to improve the health of our microbiomes which is something that in modern society are very neglected. I really hope that this has been helpful to you and Please let me know any questions, comments, or video suggestions in the comments below or any experience you've had with introducing kefir or yogurt into your diet. I'd be really interested to know. Also, if you take any probiotic and you find it helpful, please feel free to share the brand that you're using because I'd also be interested to hear what's working for people because I've tried some probiotics that really didn't seem to have any effect and others that really felt like they helped me and I'd like to know what other people are using. And thank you so much for watching and if you're interested in watching my other videos about the specific carbohydrate diet or healing from Crohn's disease, I have those in playlists on my channel and I wish you all the best on your healing journey. Okay, bye.